Hey, Sharon in Burlington, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut prescription polarized lenses for your Versace. This is model number 4228 in the color GB1, which is the classic black and gold in the 56 eye size. So of course this is the Versace box that it comes in, your Versace case, your card of authenticity, and of course your Versace frame and your Versace 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 cleaning cloth if you can actually see the emblem on there you've got it inside the case and this is your frame with the Medusa up front on each side and of course the classic lettering Versace on each side this is again the model number 4228 color GB1 in the 56 eye size with the 17 bridge and of course Versace made in Italy on the right temple so this is your frame it actually comes with a gradient lens like your windshield dark at the top and then fades to clear but we're gonna put a solid polarized gray lens in there because you too are going on vacation later this week I just got finished making a pair of sunglasses for someone who's going to the beaches in Mexico and everyone's going on vacation this week except me so I'm gonna take out your original sunglass lenses and I'm going to put your Italian frame into the stylus of my French edger and hopefully they won't fight. But I'm going to wake it up and I'm going to hit trace. Everyone wants to know how the computer knows what shape lens to cut. This is why. This stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Versace frame and you will receive free clear single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses my receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or health savings account flex dollars you can get reimbursed from this purchase of course you paid the $99 to upgrade to a polarized lens this frame sells for $200 great great frame here cute little Medusa emblem on each side hopefully my camera is good enough to pick that up but so your total price is $2.99 but anyone out there wants these with just clear lenses there's no charge except for the frame I'm actually wearing a Ray-Ban sunglasses where I took the dark lenses out and I put my clear prescription lenses in there so that's what you would get for free now let's see I gotta prep your lenses let's see your right lens is a minus 50 your left ends lens is a minus 75 sphere so I'm just gonna put it in to my Marco 101 lensometer till I find the optical center of the lens and then I'm gonna put one dot in the center and there it is is marked left I'm gonna do the same thing now for the left lens which is a minus 75 sphere find the center of the lens and then put one dot on there let me darken that what am I reaching for over there that is the left lens this is the right so let's go ahead and get your lenses prepped now here's a nice test you can always tell if lenses are polarized when you hold that you hear the term polar opposites when you place one in front of the other you should be able to see through both but when you turn it 90 degrees where they become polar opposites it blocks the light from coming through that's how you can always tell if a lens is polarized so let's go ahead and the reason why I put those dots on there that is your optical center that's going to go exactly where I place the pupillary distance which is 31.5 for your right eye so we're at 31.5 I'm going to place the dot right there inside that box that blue cross is the geometric center of your frame if you measured horizontally as well as vertically that is dead center of your frame your eye is just inset from there so I'm going to place it there now this is a block or as I like to call it Jenny from the block I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting this is what's going to hold it in place so I need to place a double-sided adhesive sticker on there which I've already done so this little silver button in the back that's as cute as a button that is a magnet that's what's going to hold it in place while it is cutting so I'm gonna peel the paper off of here to expose the black sticker place that in there the magnet holds it in place I hit that button that arms gonna come down and place the block onto your right lens now your pupillary distance for your left eye is 31 so I'm gonna drop it half a millimeter and make that 31 place the that dot right there in front of your optical center and let's pull the paper off of this block 
put the magnet in there, drop it down. And now the block is applied to your left lens. So let's go ahead and take the right lens. And where's my little flashlight? There it is. The actual cutting wheel that's going to do all the work while I stand here and just run my mouth is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grid sandpaper to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center is what's going to put the channel on the way. In that channel, it'll place the bevel so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. That's what that middle wheel will do. So I'm going to go ahead and wake this up. Oops, wait, I got an expensive stylus. By the way, this is my edger. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy one, put it on your kitchen counter, then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need me anymore. Except you need the blocker, you need the lensometer, and you need the stylus. Ooh, but it comes with here, so you know you get that with it. But if you lose this, you can always use this button. <laughs> okay, so this expensive stylus. You get these for free with iPhones. All right, so I do not want to put a bevel on your, I mean, I do not want to polish the lens. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, only a light bevel on the rear surface. So I'm going to hit start. The door closes, a clamp shuts, and then your lens is going to be traced by two white styluses that's going to make sure this lens is large enough to fit into the frame. It's going to go around and measure the shape of the lens to make sure that it is large enough. And of course, it's doing it twice to know exactly. It's actually measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel. So your lens will fit best inside the frame. It can move it forward, it can move it backward, whatever it needs to do so the lens fits in there perfectly. Of course, your lenses are not thick. You have a very mild prescription. But if you did have thick lenses, this would place the lens where it would fit in there perfectly. Now in just a moment, your lens will touch down on the cutting wheel. If you see that flickering in the back, that is water running. Polycarbonate cuts dry where plastic and high-index lenses cut wet. Water is only running to collect the sawdust, the optical sawdust, if you will, while this is cutting. But your lenses are made out of polycarb. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is also virtually unbreakable. It is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that never needs to be reapplied, like the lotions, creams, and sprays that you have to do every couple hours at the beach. Now, if you notice, your lens is completely flat at the edges like a nickel. It could, if I took it out now, it would actually stand up on its own. It's actually going to be placed down onto the bevel wheel. So you get a knife-like bevel, so it will actually fit inside the frame now. And stay inside the frame. Not only are your lenses thinner and lighter weight, unbreakable, bulletproof of the 22 caliber, both UVA, UVB protection, scratch coated, but it's also an aspheric lens, meaning that I've flattened the front curvature of the lens so it fits with the curvature of the frame. A spherical lens is completely round and gives you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance. You're going to get the highest quality premium aspheric lenses whenever you buy a frame from me. Now if you notice water has just begun spraying, it does that for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that may be on the lens itself. So an arm is just moved into place with a little wheel that looks like something you would find on a Dremel tool. That is applying the safety bevel to the edge of the lens just to smooth out any rough surface that may be left over from having the edge cut. So that is that. Let me grab a paper towel. Just a moment, the door will open. I will do that with my mind. Do you like that? I'll do it again a little bit later. I'm going to take the lens out to dry it off so your lens is not slippery because I don't want to drop it on live TV. Look, there's a little bit of optical debris left over. That water just was not doing its work. You see that? I'm scraping it off with my thumbnail. So let's go ahead and take your right lens. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner and using my thumbs, press down at the nose. It does not want to snap in there. Let me just double check. That's the problem is you go flatter. It's a little bit hard to pop in. But I'm going to take a little bit more off of your lens. Take about a tenth of a millimeter and hit retouch. 
Now a millimeter to all my American friends. A millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that distance off going around the circumference of the lens until it fits in there perfectly. You can, the golden rule of cutting, whether it's wood or lenses, you can always cut more off. You can never add it back on. So I start a little bit large and work my way down until it snaps in your frame easily. I don't want to force it in there because that would cause your frame to stretch or what we in the business call roll, where if you imagine your frame like a gutter, if the lens were too large, it would force it to roll outwards. That would shorten the life of your frame and especially the cosmetic value. And because I'm a perfectionist and I cut every pair of lenses that gets, that gets shipped worldwide, and of course free shipping anywhere in the United States, I am a perfectionist and I make sure that every lens is cut perfectly before it goes into any high quality frame. Even if I did offer low quality frames, I'd still make sure it was cut perfectly. I just can't afford to offer low quality frames. People won't buy from you. Just like my slogan indicates, everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. Besides, being a legal dealer for Ray-Ban Polo, Gucci, Prada, Versace, Michael Kors, Coach, and many, many more, I signed a contract. They tell you what price you have to sell the frame at. Look at that. Look at that. But they can't control my lens price, so that's why I offer free prescription lenses with every frame purchased. I'm just going to wipe away that residue using my thumbnail. Now let's see if the lens pops in there. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. Now it pops in easily. So let me do the same thing for the left lens. I'm going to flip that over to L. And of course, as we know, L stands for not right. Just like me. I ain't right neither. I'm going to hit that button. The door is going to close. The clamp is going to shut. And then now the lens it's going to trace the shape of the left side of the frame, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit in there. And of course, measuring twice, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so that your lens fits best inside the frame and you have no edge thickness whatsoever being exposed. So since that is going to begin cutting, I'm going to keep working on your right lens. I'm going to take that block off. Pull the double-sided adhesive sticker off. It is no longer needed. Dry your lens off while keeping that red dot there. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to go down and just verify the prescription is correct in the right eye. I'm going to put that in there. And I am getting... Where's my flashlight? Don't take my word for it. I am getting minus 50, which is exactly halfway between 0 and 1. The unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, and goes in quarter increments. So you start at zero, which we in the business call Plano, everyone else calls non-prescription, and goes up from there in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50 for the right eye, 0.75 for the left. So you need two steps of correction for your right eye. You are nearsighted from, with, with your hands inward, you see great, you only need help at a distance. So you need two steps of correction for your farsightedness in the right eye. You need three steps of correction for your left eye. As we age, our muscles get weaker. We have six eye muscles. Don't ask me to name them because I cannot remember. Although give me five minutes to study up and I'll be able to tell you. Hang on. We have the superior, the inferior, the obliques, the lateral. Hang on, what else is there? Oh, I'm missing one or two. I hope my old professors aren't watching. But your prescription is made perfectly for now. Then we'll check and see what it is on the left lens as soon as it is done. Where's my flashlight? There it is. It's hard to keep up with this thing. I've got a smaller flashlight. I just can't find it. So if you notice, the water has just begun spraying on the lens. That reminds me I need to take a bath. Spring is coming, you know. I take one once a year my spring cleaning so Sharon you are the second person this week that's going on vacation someone else is gonna go sit on a sunny beach in Mexico hopefully you're going somewhere warm and wonderful there's still snow and ice laying on the ground in the yard oh, I so want to go on vacation but I'm the hardest working man in the optical business 
I work seven days a week, totaling 100 hours a week. I work from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Friday, answering emails and then, of course, uploading the videos to YouTube when I go home tonight. And I work half days on the weekends, quite literally. I only work 12 hours a day on Saturday and Sunday. Because I'm lazy. Who wants to work 15 hours a day, seven days a week? But I am a perfectionist. I'm not going to let anyone else do my lab work or trust them that they ship the right lenses with the right frames. I'm going to do everything. So, I'm not complaining of that old saying, it's never work if you love what you do and there's so much truth to that. So hopefully everyone out there watching this finds something that you love to do and it never is work. So, I'm going to tuck the left lens in at the outside corner. Here's my thumbs. I press down at the nose. That snaps in perfectly. I'm going to take the block off. I'm going to remove the double-sided adhesive sticker. I'm going to dry your lens off. And I'm going to go over there to and inspect the prescription on your left lens. And I am getting... I keep losing my flashlight. I am getting minus 75, which is one tick mark away from one. So that is made perfectly. I couldn't make that any better if I would made it myself. Now your pupillary distance is 31.5 for your right eye, 31 for your left, so a combined value of 62.5. Let's see, if I hold this up to the light, I'm going to place my PD stick against my thumb on the right lens. And then when we look on the left, we're getting 62.5 millimeters, so that is made perfectly. And of course, this is the point in every video as I'm cleaning the lenses to explain that when you get these in the mail, there is a very small chance that these could be too loose or too tight however there's an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that is because 99 i'm sorry 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and because of that math that is why 99 percent of all optical shops out there will do free adjustments if you ask them and i'm part of that 80 percent and i'll show you in just a moment as I finish wiping all my fingerprints off of your lenses. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and I place them on the counter, they wobble, but they sit level on me. I'm going to flip them over, press down on the counter. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly in the dew and the same amount of tension on each hinge. So Sharon and Burlington, of course, anyone else out there who has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Now Sharon and Burlington, I hope you enjoyed watching as I made polarized gray lenses for your Versace 4228 color GB1 in the 56 i size. And of course, all Versace's are made in Italy. You get the white leather case with the cleaning cloth. And of course, I include instructions on how to care for not only your glasses, but for your case and cleaning cloth so they will last you for years. I also include a photo request with every pair of glasses made so that you can... Um, I ask for everyone to be a Versace model so I can put your picture on the website. But other than that, hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.